Good afternoon, everybody, and a big warm welcome to you all. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm sure you're wondering what my cyber wall is all about. So we're going to spend about 20 minutes and I'm going to do a demonstration of my cyber wall for primary schools. That's grade four to seven. Hi, um, that we focus on. My name is Angela. I'm the CEO of my cyber wall. And my partner, Stuart, is also here and he'll be manning the chat. So as I'm doing the demo, if you do have questions, please type your message in the chat. Stuart will answer them. And after the demo, I will come back and see if there's anything else we want to discuss or any more questions that you've got. Uh, also, after the session, which will be about 20 minutes, we can give you a login so that you can have a look around my cyber wall yourself, because obviously in 20 minutes, uh, you're not going to be able to see everything that my cyber wall does. And before your school buys, I'm sure you want to have a good look around. OK, so I'm going to screen share in a minute. I won't be able to see the chat. You'll obviously, I hope, be able to see me and my screen. And Stuart will alert me if there's any technical issues. Uh, so we're going to cover, we're going to have a look at what we offer and cover things like why should your school buy my cyber wall, what benefits do your teachers and your learners get, um, yeah, and just any basic questions that you've got. Okay, so I'm sure that you know as teachers you're spending a huge amount of time preparing for lessons and marking work. And that's why we designed my cyber wall to help you to ease those problems and to save teachers time. Also to make the, in, the lessons you know, interesting and interactive as well. So before I turn the screen, I'm just going to share with you the two different types of license that we have. I'm gonna start screen sharing now as I'm telling you this, I'm gonna share my entire screen and I'm going to log into my cyber wall. So the first type of license we have is called a classroom license, which is with teachers only, and they can use that at home and at school. And the other type is uh, called a school license, which is used for teachers and by learners. So if you do have the technology in your school that you have devices or a computer lab, or your learners have computers at home, you might want to consider a school license. But you can obviously start off with a classroom license. And the aim is that your teachers would use it in the classroom um, to assist the learning. Now, you should all be seeing my homepage now, which is the My Side Wall homepage. If you can't, just please type in the chat and Stuart will alert me or alert you what to do. Um, hopefully, everything is good and clear. Um, OK, so let's start off by logging in. So everyone is issued with a login teachers, um, the teacher interface, we'll have a look at and we'll quickly look at the learner interface, just have a look at the differences, because they're going to go onto the same platform and everything is going to be in one place for them. So it's very easy to use. It's not like ebooks where you have to buy lots of different subjects and lots of different grades. No, everything is all here. So my cyber wall, you will definitely be hearing my Pommy accent still. I have been here for over 30 years in South Africa. I am South African. Um, but you will know that my cyberwall has been developed in South Africa by teachers. We are uh, CAPS aligned, but we are also used by IEB schools and even Cambridge schools as well. So I'm gonna log in now and just take you to the landing page, which is where we are now. Um, you obviously need an internet connection. And again, it depends what technology you have in your classroom. I'm assuming that your teachers have got laptops and they would be able to project some way. It doesn't have to be fancy smart boards. We have schools that use overhead projectors and it works perfectly well. Everything on my cyber wall also is downloadable um, and printable. So for example, if you have issues with the internet, as I know we all do from time to time, you can download uh, things in advance and then you can just pull them up on your screen obviously as long as you've got power um, but that's another issue okay so here we are on the landing page and you can see that I've logged in and I'm in a teacher account now so if your um, if your teachers have got an account they've got access to everything on my cyber wall and they can use it at home in lesson prep and they can use it in the classroom so they can print, they can display it on their screens, and they can also copy and paste content into their own notes. And I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Okay, one of the things that we do have with our um, licenses is we offer free SACE accredited training. You, your teachers get their CPD points. Uh, we have five points for the introduction. It's all online. Well, our session is a half an hour because we know how busy teachers are. 
uh, and we can cover the basics in half an hour and that's how we do it and all the, te the all the training is free as is all the support and we have a support hotline where you can get help I won't say 24 hours a day uh, but we do check the support email every single day Okay, so we are, as I said, senior primary. We've been going for 12 years um, and we've got schools throughout the country and also in Eswatini who use us. And we also do have some home schools and individuals, um, families do by family licenses as well. So here's the subjects that we cover. As I say, it's all caps aligned. The only ones where we don't have the full curriculum is the FAL. I just want to take you through and quickly show you what we do have. So I'm going to start with English, which is the home language it's grade four five six and seven i'm just going to take you to the index which is your menu let me full screen and i obviously can't show you everything but just as an overview really you'll see that we have first of all the language use which is the grammar we have writing we have reading we don't have listening on my cyber wall but all the reading comprehensions can also be used as listening we have termly assessments and the annual teaching plans. OK, so that's English home language and that's what we cover and that's for each grade. So let's go to geography next. I'm just sticking with grade four for now, but I will change to another grade uh, when we look at other sections. So geography, um, we've got term by term exactly as per the caps. And you see term one, places where we live, then map skills, et cetera, et cetera. Again, the termly assessments, I am gonna show you those and the annual teaching plans. Let me quickly show you how that works. So if you are following CAPS, you can download the annual teaching plan. I'm going to term one, I guess we're on week three or four. Um, I'm not sure, but let's just open it up first. And Okay, my internet is a slightly bit slow, but hopefully you can see my screen. So I've downloaded the ATP for geography, grade four, term one. And if I'm in week four, all I do is click on the link here and it will take me to where I should be uh, on my cyber wall as per the ATP for this week, which is people and places. So it will open up in people and places. There we go. So that is the section. But I'm going to come back to the content pages. I want to just stick with the subjects that we have for now. Okay, so the next one is history. Let's just move grade now. I'm going to history grade five. And let's just have a look at the menu again, the index. So for grade five history, we've got all the content as per caps. Again, the assessments, again, the ATPs. And let's go to life skills grade five. Again, we have the whole caps um, exactly as per the ATP, and we have adjusted everything as per the ATP 23, 24. And anything that's been taken out of the ATP, we still leave in here because we do have a, um, IEB schools as well. So we just leave it on for them. Maths, we have everything here as per the caps and the ATP, uh, and it's divided into the learning areas with the term assessments. And again, I am going to show you those. Uh, what else? NS and technology. So we have grade four, five, six, and seven. And then in grade seven, we have technology as a separate subject. Let me quickly show you, let's go there. Grade seven, I'll try and do a variety of different because I'm not sure what you guys teach. So here is grade seven technology with the assessments and the ATP. And also in grade seven, we obviously have EMS, which is there. And then we have FAL. So FAL, let's look at the Afrikaans. FAL, we don't have the full curriculum. We don't have reading or writing, but we do have um, language use, which is grammar. And we have vocabulary development as well. And there's quite a lot of content and all the term assessments and the ATPs there as well. So for Isisulu, we have the same. We have language use and vocabulary for each of the grades. And if you're one of the schools in the Cape, we do have Isikosa, but we only have the vocabulary and language in grade four and five and grade six and seven. We don't have language yet, but the FAL is an area where we're adding stuff all the time. And by the way, we do update our content all the time. So we're not like a textbook um, or even an ebook. As things changed, if there was a volcano somewhere or let's say after the elections this year, we obviously update content accordingly. OK, so that is what we do and don't cover. There's also other sections. I'm not going to go into them in details, but there are additional things like study skills for the learners 
there's the Save Your Planet, which is the environmental section. I will just quickly show you that. It's not caps aligned, but it's just additional resources for the teachers and the learners. And then also in the teacher account, not in the learner account, we have what we call Live Life, which is all the social issues that kids face. Um, and there's a lot wealth of information there. This is in addition, obviously, to the life skills, the CAPS uh, menu. Okay, so we also have a section of resources with FAQs, a user guide, um, and resources for teachers and learners. And you'll see another tab called Educator Exercises. Educators can build their own exercises on my sidewall if they want to. We don't want to create work for them, um, but if they do want to build their own exercise, the functionality is there. I'm going to show you some of the content pages now and I'm going to go to a couple of different subjects. I'm going to go to grade six, sorry, grade seven English. Um, I'm going to a reading one and you see how much content there is here. And I'm going to reading a short story. I just want to show you what the content looks like and what you can do with it. So here we have reading a short story, grade seven. I'm just gonna full screen my page here. So if you see this PDF button at the top here, you can download this whole section. I'll just do that so you can see that brain throbbing means my internet is working. And here we have got a PDF if you did want to download it. And obviously you can hand this out if you want to. It's exactly what you'll see on the screen. There's an example of a short story. You see for grade seven, it's kind of summarized um, and very nice and visual. So there's section by section and each section can be printed individually as well. So you don't waste any paper. So this is elements of a short uh, story, how to read a short story and then an example. And then you'll see all the different exercises uh, or activities so this is what we call a manually marked one. Uh, so the computer won't mark this, your educator will have to mark it. So these are all appropriate um, short stories. So there's one there called flea bags. And um, here's the question. So the learners can either work on screen and type their answers in and everything can be marked on screen as well. But I'm not gonna go into that for today. Um, or you can print it. So in the educator account, there is the exercise here. You can obviously just show this on the screen and the learners can um, write the answers in their workbooks. Uh, let's just have a look here. But if you wanted to hand it out, you can. You can do this obviously as a little assessment if you wanted to as well. And that would be what you were handing out. And you see it's all nicely formatted and yeah, you can use that to hand out to the learners. And what you have as well is model answers or the actual answers as the memo which is great um, because all the work's being done for you or for your teachers, but all the answers are actually there. Okay, so all the answers you can see are in purple there. Okay, the other button here is a submit button, which is what the learner will use. And we'll have a look at the learner account quickly in a minute as well. So there's more reading comprehensions here. It's not just one, but you'll see that there's quite a few. Um, and also the questions in the ones like this, uh, have been, we look at the cognitive levels and make sure there's higher order questions there as well. I just want to take you to a different subject just to show you again the layout. So there's the content, there's exercises, and there's what we call links and videos. I'll come back to the links and videos now. I'm going to go to grade five history. If you do have questions, please type it in the chat and I'm sure Stuart will answer you. I'm just going to grade five history, way of life in ancient Egypt. Again, I'm just showing you the content and the exercises for now. So in the contents for this, let me full screen. We've got all the different sections as per the ATP, which is the pharaohs and government. Let's just open that up. Sorry, I didn't click properly. There we go. And you see it's all nicely illustrated. You can print it, you can share it on the screen. The other thing you can do is let's say you just like that particular picture. You could just right click and save that image and then you can copy and paste it into a Word document. You just have to acknowledge the source as my cyber wall. The other thing you can do is you can copy and paste as well the text from here. So if you wanted to copy just that section, for example, and then you can copy it into a Word document. Okay, I'm not gonna do all of that now, but just to show you how you can do that. And again, you just have to acknowledge the source. Okay, so I'm going to another, I'm going to Afrikaans, just as F-A-L. So I'm going to Afrikaans grade six, and I'm going to something like um, adverbs in language use. As I say, we don't have the full curriculum, but we do have 
um, a lot of the other things there. So we've got the contents, what is an adverb, the types of adverbs, and uh, we've got the examples of Afrikaans adverbs there, just some examples. And then obviously we do have the exercises there, which are describing how to describe verbs. You'll see this exercise, we've got a lot of different types of exercises. So we have, I think, 10 different types and we have over 5,000 exercises and assessments. I'm going to show you the assessments in a minute. So basically what you would do here is to put the answer, type it into the box um, and it will auto mark. About 80% of the um, activities on my cyber wall will auto mark. Let's just see if you wanted to print this out. There it is. So that would be if you wanted to hand this out to your learners, you can. This would be your worksheet or you can just put it on the board and the learner obviously has to put the answer. Um, it should only fit into one place so it will auto mark correctly. And then there's another one here, verbs and types of adverbs, where they look at a paragraph and identify. I think it's all the, ad the verbs, all the adverbs and identify the type of adverb there as well. So that's just an example of Afrikaans there. So let me just do quickly one more subject and then we'll go into some other stuff. Let's go to maths. I'm going to go to grade six maths and I'm going to transformations. And then we'll go to some assessments. OK, so this is grade six maths. Again, same kind of layout. There's exercises just in terms of the links. Links are third party sites that your learners or your teachers can go on to for more information. We have about 12,000 links and videos um, on my cyber wall. And we do try and keep these up to date. Um, they do sometimes get broken um, because it's an ongoing job to get everything. Let's just have a look at what a web activity would be. There's a warning that you're going off my cyber wall and confirm. We do check these out and make sure that they are suitable. So this is an IXL, which is a really great um, site, which is some questions are given for free. OK, there it is. Does this pay, have rotational symmetry? I guess, yes, I don't know, but uh, I'm not going to do it. Obviously, I don't want to show my my ignorance. Um, OK, so that's the question there and the answer. It's a nice website. And then just the videos as well. So we have thousands of videos here. So again, you could we've done all the work for the teachers in finding videos and links and you just press on there and it will play the video for you. You full screen, check your volume. OK, I'm not going to play it, um, obviously, just because of time but just to show you that we have got all of those things at the click of a button. Let me just close, close some of my tabs. Uh, okay, so here's transformations, and you'll see on this one, you actually can see the transformation. That's a slide or a translation, a reflection, um, and then internal rotation. And then we have, again, you have the different exercises which can be done on the screen. That's a multiple choice, again, different exercise type just for variety um, and just in terms of exercise types we also have things like matching where we do it as a drag and drop i'll show you one quickly and then i'm going to take you to some assessments uh, map of south africa grade four geography uh where am i labeling the provinces of south africa and what i like to do for this i'm demoing it i'll do a full screen and i'm just going to make a little bit smaller just so it can fit on the screen and you can see it for the demo so basically it's a matching exercise or where you have to um, drag the label to the correct place and if you're in the learner account it would auto mark let's just do Hateng so that would go into the Hateng block there it's taking a bit of time because my internet is a little bit slow but you will see it is well it should be placed there let me drag it to the correct place there and then if we were in the learner's accounts you press submit and it shows the mark. So if we were in a learner account, and let's quickly go there, because I can see time is whizzing away. I'm gonna just log in as a learner. Um, I'm gonna go in as billboard. So the learner account, how is it different? Well, first of all, obviously there's no answers. There's no memos. Um, if you have a look at the, this calendar here, you can also see that this learner has um, these are assessments that have been, um, not assessments, um, exercises that have been assigned to him by his teacher. So if you have a school license, we link all your learners to your teachers so that your teachers can set assignments for the class. And then the learner does them. Like here, for example, I'm not going to do them now just in, for the sake of time, uh, but let's just go to it. And you will see 
um, here is the exercise and they can save the exercise and they submit and I'm going to just do one or two just so you can see so that girl is a real the answer there I know is beauty I have a something of spiders fear okay I'm just going to do two obviously I haven't got everything else correct and I would press submit remember I'm a learner now it tells me I have two correct and also a button appears called my answers so I'm going to download that button and have a look what I got right and wrong and also as a teacher if you'd assign this to your learners um, you could see their marks and what they've got right and wrong so it's given me a tick for those two and obviously I didn't complete anything else so at the top there it's a bit more for you to see on the screen but you'll see um, the score it's converted it to a percentage the date the time I've submitted it etc etc okay so let's go out of there I can make this a bit bigger again only 80 percent so the other thing that's different is you don't have live life on the learner account um, and you don't obviously have the tab for assignments let's just have a look i'm going to go back to the teacher account i just wanted to quickly show you how that works and how the learner submits and what the answer sheet looks like so i'm just logging out and i'm just going to go back in as a teacher into my own account angela i just want to show you some assessments now but if you've got any questions um, on what we've done so far um, please obviously ask Stuart and then I'm going to come back and join you just now. Um, I'm not going to show you all the different exercise types, but we have things like hidden answer, matching columns, drag and drops, crosswords, etc. And then the manually marked ones, which are generally the higher order ones. Let's go to look at um, some assessments. So I'm just going to go to grade five. Let's just look at Afrikaans. Let's just look at the term assessment. So it's term one. So let's have a look at what we have, which is a whole bunch of stuff for the languages. Um, I always wonder how the teachers get time to create all this stuff because I know how long it's taken us to create it. So I know this term there is an oral uh, prepared reading. In the attachments, you'll see there's a rubric that can be used there. And then the next task is a creative writing essay. This is for grade five and it's given them some topics. Again, you'll see a rubric there and then you'll see the language test. Uh, which is the literary, non-literary text, which is 15 marks for term one. Um, the visual text, which is, how many marks is that? 10 marks, and then there is the language instruction, uh, instructions and conventions. A lot of these will automatically mark, by the way. So this one, for example, you'll see it's a multiple choice and it's a hidden, what we call a hidden answer. As long as the learner formats it correctly, all of this will auto mark, which means you don't need to mark it, um, which obviously is a huge time saver for you. So that's an example of an Afrikaans one. Let's just look at grade six maths, just to show you the assessments. I'm going to get into term one as we're in term one, and it's just loading them up. So there's a midterm assignment here. Most of it will auto mark. It's exactly the marks as per the ATP. Um, Again, you could print this, and remember, you've also got all the answers. So you could use this as a practice assessment if your learners don't have accounts, but obviously if you do have, um, or you could use it as the final assessment if they don't have accounts, I guess. So all of this will auto mark up to now. Uh, I think it's only the last part. No, this looks like the whole thing. Okay, it's only part six, which is one question that you would have to mark. The rest of it will automatically mark when the learner presses submit as long as they have formatted it correctly remember you can download it you can go through it on the screen or you can print it as well and you've got the memo button there as well let's just look at one more i'm going to just take a history uh possibly a grade uh Term one, grade six, there we go. Here's the history test for term one. And you'll see there is a hidden answer there. Again, that will watermark. And it covers everything that's supposed to cover uh, in terms of the ATP with the correct cognitive levels. There's a multiple choice there. Um, and then there's a hidden, hidden word, hidden answer, a true and false. And question 10, uh, sorry, one and two of part six are the manually marked questions, which are the higher order questions. Um, with some sources there with the mark allocation. Okay, so that's some of the assessments. And we have updated these all according to the ATP. Okay, I'm not sure if you've got any questions. I'm going to come back into the room just now. Uh, I'm not gonna show you how to assign work, but it is very easy if you wanted to assign this to your class. As I say, we link them all to you. And all you do at the click of a button is to, I'm just gonna assign this to my class. 
which is grade four. And let's make it an assessment. I'm not going to put a description, but basically that has been assigned. Uh, the scoring is in there and I can give it more than one attempt if I want to, but let's just give it one. And that will then appear in my calendar and in my learner's calendar as well. So I put that in, there it is for the ninth and it's brown, it's history. And I can have a look at it from here and the learner goes into their own calendar to do the exercise. Okay, we obviously not, don't have time for that now. Um, okay, so the other thing we have is a reporting. We can see what the marks are for assigned work. Again, I'm not gonna show you all of that now. Very happy to do a demo to your school and to your teachers or to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you online as well. Um, in the resources section, I'm uh, just gonna show you, should be all the help that your teachers need in terms of FAQs and tutorials, et cetera. And then if you log, we log out, you can always go to the YouTube channel where we've got videos for parents, for learners, we're actually just redoing the learner ones um, and for teachers as well. And everything when we do our webinars, which we run every term for teachers, we have replays on YouTube that obviously can be watched afterwards. And I say they're all SAIS accredited. OK, so I think I'm, I'm just about done. So just to sum up really how we different, we're a one stop shop. So we've got everything in one place. Hopefully you'll find us very cost effective and we're quite happy to do a comparison of costing as well with your textbooks. If you like, we do have schools that use my cyber as a replacement for some or all of the textbooks or some use it as an additional resource. Um, it's obviously up to you, but we're very easily accessible and you see it's very, very easy to use and we offer free training and support as well. Everything is South African, so it's not like a British or an American site that's been tried to be put into the South African curriculum um, and you'll see like American spelling or anything. No, it's definitely not. So the aim is to save time for the teachers and to make the lessons more interesting um, and visual for the learners as well. And yeah, I um, think that's it. I'm gonna come back into the room and see if there are questions. I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, so I'm um, stop sharing. Okay, sorry, somebody had load shedding. Oh dear. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so Eunice, you say you teaching Afrikaans grade six. So we're happy to give you a login so you can have a look. Uh, you'll see all the assessments. You'll see the um, the language use and the vocabulary. Um, and we don't have the writing and reading at the moment, but there is quite a lot for you to use. I'm sure. Uh, are there any other questions? And we'll give you a login as well. Any questions? So basically, we offer options for teachers and for learners. Uh, it depends what you want. Um, and yeah, the demo login, once you've had a look, we can give you a quote. We can pro rata your rate for this year if you still want to look for this year. So we can work out how many months are left um, of the year and work something out for you. Um, and we can get the training set up. We can get you set up and running in a day. We're very efficient like that. Um, and yeah, I think that's all. So any questions, please write in the chat. We'll hang around for a couple of minutes and we'll be in touch. I'll, give, I'll email you tomorrow and Stuart will set you up a demo login. And then you've got a week or two weeks or as long as you need to have a look. And then um, we'll be in touch and see what you'd like to do for the next step. But thank you so much for your time and for attending today. And I really hope you like what you see. Okay, bye everybody. I'm just gonna stay here, but I'm gonna turn my camera off.